this thing will not appear or only a bit of it will appear by the screen okay you want to kind of go to the right of it if you want some points close to the edge like so right the main point is that we've got point 31 here and this coincides with the one that we saw earlier in the uh, plot of the um, leverage uh, this plot here look residuals versus leverage point 31 point 31 Recall we say that case is influential if the Cook's distance is bigger than 1. Here is not 0.6. So you wouldn't say that there's an outlier according to that rule. And although the Cook's distance in R has a cutoff of half, I don't know, you know, we, you, know you, you can use a, less, a more stringent one. You could use half if you like, but the standard one is to use a 1. Once we are done, uh, cl identifying points. How you escape from this is, you, well, how you get out of this is press the escape button on your keyboard. Otherwise, you won't be able to type in anything on this console. So I press escape. By the way, I'm using Windows, right? It might be different if you're using some kind of other system. I'm using Windows. Okay, so there you go. Now I exit the identify command. Next thing is to examine the leverages. To get a list of the leverage, we can use the hat values followed by the name of the regression command. If I type lev now, that's what I've created, it gives you for each of the observations, and I have 31 observations, it gives you the list of the leverage values for each one. Recall the average value of the leverage points for the observations is number of parameters in your model. So here I got one constant and two slope ones, one for one for each explanatory variable, so one for girth and one for height, divided by number of observations in my sample, which is 31. So I expect the height, the uh, leverage value for each observation to be around 0.1, approximately 0.1. Okay. Recall that large leverage points means that the observation tends to pull the line more towards it. Right, so rule of thumb is what is considered as high leverage? Well, since we know the average is a number of parameters divided by sample size, um, you could define large leverage as between two to three. So some practitioners use two times this value, some will use two and a half, some will use three. So let's say I'm using two here, so that's where that two comes from. Two times the average, this is the average size of leverage points for each observation. And I'm going to tell it to list uh, the leverage points where the leverage is bigger than this. Then I see there are two points, 20 and 31. Leverage points way bigger than 0 0.1. It's about double, about double that. So this um, observation appears also as a point of high leverage. So we say the point of high leverage here, two points, 20 and 31. This point 30, 20 does not appear on the uh, Cook's distance for influential values. 31 does. But is this point 31 an outlier? Well, recall that this Cook's distance is a function of the leverage and it takes into account also the size of the uh, residual, stand, standardized residual. So the fact that this has a high Cook's distance, well it's not high, well if you consider 0.5 high, okay, but it's higher than the others. So the reason why this could be high is either due to or both of the fact that it has a large standardized residual or that it has a large leverage or that it's both. Here we can see that it's got high leverage, so it could be that this that is responsible for this. But is this point also an outlier? To see that, we look at the standardized or studentized residual plots, which were brought up earlier. So let's go back to. All right, so I want to plot specifically a plot of the standard standardized residuals. And the command for that is R standard, followed by the name of the regression. So I'm going to plot it, the girth on the x-axis and the standardized residuals on the y-axis, which I've got here. And then look, looking at it, you know that this is, we can say, well, it's T, but we can say it's approximately normal. So we know that about 95% of the residuals should fall between my plus and minus 2. 
This one's slightly over 2, so it doesn't mean that it's an outlier because it's only slightly over 2. And it's looking at the scale, it's not close to 3, it's more like 2 point something between 2 and 2.5. If we want to identify that point, we use this identify command like I've shown you before. Let's look at it. Is it point 31? Wait a second. Right, there you go. It is point 31. Well, I was not getting anything earlier on is because if you click too far from the th point, then R doesn't know where it's looking, so it'll give you the command no point within 0.25 inches. Uh -huh. Okay, so there you are. It is that point. This suggests then that that point 31 could also be an outlier, but it's a point of high leverage as well. Okay, so that does it for for the leverages, but let's I'm showing you a picture of how what we could do with the leverage. So let's look at the leverage, uh, plot the leverages. So created the leverages, let's plot to the leverages versus one of the explanatory variables. I'm doing a GURF again. Okay, I pressed enter. Nothing seems to happen. Now, I get questions from the sort of students. Oh, nothing's happened. Well, it has. Something has happened. It's just that um, your it's your graphics page is hidden somewhere. There it is. Okay, so it's right there. Uh huh. Well, it's still got two by two format, which I don't want. So let's convert it back. All right, so there you go. I deleted it and uh, just ran it again. Here you go. So I got trees and I got leverage and the values we spotted before were 20 and 31. 20 taking the value about 0.21, so we'd expect it to be here. The point th observation 31 is about 0.23 here, so we'd expect this observation 20 here 31 to come.